Basically, the engine gives birth to the Vanos pipe there. So there's the high pressure pipe, which has now come down internally. <laughs> So we've got an E60 M5 in with us at Reedish Motorsport today and we're going to show you in hopefully in detail what goes into changing the Vanos high pressure pipe. Now this is the internal pipe which goes from the Vanos pump inside the engine uh, inside the sump um, up through the engine block and pops out in the valley of the engine at the front um, just in between the cylinder heads. So here is with the air boxes out, um, bank one air box removed and bank two airbox removed. And at that point, you might just be able to see the engine mount nuts right in the middle there. That's what we need to take the airboxes off to uh, get the air uh, to get the engine mount nuts done done so that then we can take the um, subframe off later on. Uh, but to get to the Vanos pipe, we've got a lot more work because the Vanos pipe is buried deep down in the sort of valley or the V section near where the timing case would be between the two banks. Um, and as you can see, a normal built up V10 engine bay is quite, um, well, quite busy with components. We've got radiator outlet hoses, Vanos pipes, secondary air pump pipes, front panels, radiator hoses, radiator fans, fan wiring. So we've got lots more to take out. So we're just going to show you roughly what goes into um, getting access to the Vanos high pressure pipe, which is down in here and then goes through the engine internally. First of all, we need to remove the front panel, which is what the bonnet locks go into. Just like that. Obviously it was bolted down. We've taken all those bolts out previously to speed the video process up. And then we need to take out the air conditioning or air guide for the air conditioning and water radiator which uh, again was bolted in, but we'd already removed the bolts for the video. So that comes out fairly quickly, fairly easily. Um, and then we've got access to all the radiators. So we've got power steering cooler, air conditioning radiator or condenser, and then the main radiator as well, which is interestingly a split design radiator. You've got a top cooling section for one of the banks and then a lower cooling section for another bank. So you've got four radiator hoses, two inlet, two returns, and they are a split design. So next up, it's basically moving off these hoses that again, we're all clipped in, but have now been taken out and moving the wiring and getting all that out of the way so that we can get the electric fan lifted. The electric up. fan needs to come out, which is always quite a tight squeeze. But with that out of the way, then we get much more room towards the belt drive system. Um, and we still can't see the Vanos pipe, it's quite still hidden. Next up, we need to take the um, upper radiator return hose off. Next up is to drain the antifreeze out of the radiator, and that's so that we can take off that return hose, the radiator hose so that we can get access to the top of the um, engine block where the Vanos pipe is held. So now we're just draining the antifreeze out. After the electric fan is removed, then we need to take off the secondary air pump distribution rail. Obviously we've unplugged all this. This is just for videoing, so it just lifts off simply. That is now out of the way and uh, out of the system. We then need to take off the drive belt system. Again, we've sped this process up by already taking it off. We're just showing you simply what comes off next drive belts come off, then the tensioner here for the uh, alternate, uh, for the air conditioning and power steering belt system has to be unbolted and removed. Then we need to take off the water pump pulley, which you can see we've already unbolted. This is just so that we can do it in one video take. And also the water pipe. So this is the upper return one for the upper section of the radiator. Um, sensible also to cap the outputs. So we've got plastic caps on there so that no water is going to drain out and contaminate belts or into our working area. Uh, we've taken the secondary one out as well because it's a split radiator design. So we've taken the top one and the bottom one, both on the return side. Then we can just start to, at that point, let's just pan out and see where we are now, start to see the Vanos high pressure pump, which is just there underneath my finger. So it's an internal pipe, which is, um, coming up through this part of the engine block and then has a banjo bolt going through um, a, a T-piece distribution pipe, which is also for the Vanos system. So that T-piece distribution pipe, which goes down there is for the Vanos pressure accumulator, which lives externally bolted to the outside of the sump. And this part of the T-piece distribution goes up to this rail here, which then also T-pieces across and gives Vanos pressure to bank one over here and bank two over there. 
So first of all, you need to take that banjo bolt out, which has got two copper washers. Um, once that banjo is out, that distribution rail can be moved forward by unbolting this bolt and this bolt from the water pump housing. Um, but even then, you still need to take another pipe off. This one here, this is the power steering high pressure line, which comes out of the power steering pump. That needs to be unbolted and moved forward a small amount so that this distribution system can come this way. Um, and that's what we're gonna show you next. The items have been removed in the engine bay and the front of the timing case area. Then we need to come under the car. Obviously the sump has to come off, which is a massive a lot of work because you've got to take all those tub frame and the suspension uh, disconnect anyway. You'd really only do this when you're doing Conroll bearings, which is why exactly why we've got the sump off already. And we've obviously already planned this video. So we've got bolts and things disconnected. Here's the banjo bolt area that banjo bolt would go through the pipe straight into the pump. And we've already taken the chain tensioner and the spring system out. And this is for video purposes. It doesn't normally come out this easy, but I'm just showing you that we have to take out the Vanos pump, which is this big item here, which is helical driven straight off of the crankshaft. Um, gear wheel just there. Uh, so once that's out of the way, then we have finally got access to the Vanos high pressure pipe. Now we can go back up into the engine bay and actually undo the top section of it where it's poking out through the engine. So box. once the power steering banjo bolt has been removed, which comes out the side of the pump, then the power steering pipe can be moved forward out of the way. And then the bolt here, the power steering, uh, sorry, the banjo bolt for the Vanos high pressure pipe can be simply removed and then the distribution rail can be moved out of the way. It simply doesn't move out of the way because it's bolted in on a bracket here via the um, water pump bolt. So that has to be moved and then finally we'll get access to the Vanosh high pressure pipe. So now the distribution rail is unbolted at the water pump. We now have got some movement, a little bit of slack, not a huge amount but we can, uh, we can pull it out of the way and now get to the fixing bolt, which is behind this banjo. You might not be able to see it, but we've taken a fixing bolt out and also lifted the top of the, there we go. Here is the, the old piece. We might as well do this now live on video. This is the old Vanos high pressure pipe, which comes internally through the engine. So it's a little bit of a fiddle because let's just pan out and show you where we are in the sort of valley section of the V10 trying to um, twist this because it's a braided part which has got um, crimp joints on and it's quite a metal component, quite an interesting structure. I'll just show you what the new one looks like. Here it is. So what we're pulling out is this top bit and there's an O-ring on that joint there. Um, and we're trying to get this snake sort of shaped bottom piece up through the engine around the uh, chain and gear wheel um, and, uh, and obviously come out the top. So those are the new four o-rings copper two for the top banjo two for the bottom one and it looks like we're um, at a position where it's now just come out so there it is the oily old vanos high pressure pipe you can see it's obviously the old one because it's oil stained and where it lives is right down in the engine block hole just down there which is now completely open to atmosphere right next to the water pump pulley and again just to pan out to show you where we are in a v10 that's where it is, and that's how much work goes into getting the old one out. Um, we still need to put the new one in, which we're gonna show you on a video um, shortly. Um, so I'm now underneath the car, and Darren is at the top, and he's gonna feed that pipe through. It doesn't normally go through in one piece. It's normally a two-man job, because you have to sort of catch it, or feed it through, and grab it, and twist it. But um, this is us now going to uh, attempt to get this through. Let's see if it goes, how well it goes. So you can just see it just poking through, just up there in front of the crankshaft hub. This is the helical splined gear, which drives the Vanos pump actually, which is bolted directly onto the end of the crankshaft. And in certain times, you need to sometimes get your hand up there and give it a little twist like that. And now we can see more of it. And effectively the engine gives birth to the Vanos pipe there. So there's the high pressure pipe, which has now come down internally. Um, and we then put the Vanos unit back on, the Vanos high pressure pump, which, um, which gets driven directly from this helical gear off the crankshaft here. We have to set the backlash on that as well, because that's really important. The backlash gets set to 0 0.07 of a millimeter between this gear and the Vanos high pressure pump, which is here. Otherwise you would get a whining noise. Um, and then we can put the piggyback chain on, which powers the main pump over here, which is the main oil pump. And then once everything is fully bolted down to the uh, engine block, we can then put two new copper washers on either side and the banjo bolt, and then bolt this new Vanos high pressure pipe 
straight into the side of the Vanos pump and effectively then rebuild the top of the engine um, and, uh, and seal it off at the top. And then we're pretty much done. That's replacing the internal Vanos high pressure pipe on the S85 V10 engine. So there it was, you just watched the installation of the new pipe being received from underneath, and that's the new one sat in position. It still needs to be pressed in, the O-ring needs to go fully home, and then we'll obviously bolt it in. Then we've got the task of rebuilding in reverse. So all these things take additional time. Um, the little bit of work taking the Vanos pump off the underside, that isn't too much of a job. Obviously has to be done uniquely to the Vanos pipe, doesn't have to be done for the Comrade bearings and neither does any of this front top end dismantlement and then rebuild that doesn't have to work or happen for the Comrade bearings this is unique to the Vanos high pressure pipe so if you do have a Vanos high pressure pipe that needs doing or want that done this goes some way to show you what happens during that process and uh, and why we charge an extra two and a half hours on top of the Comrade bearings to um, to take out and disassemble all the front end work and the Vanos pump and then uh, rebuild everything just to install that small little Vanos high pressure pipe.